G'day guys, it's Lee Dupreis here with the talented Michael Fletcher. Welcome G'day. Mike, how are you? Well, very well, thank you. How are Good. you? I'm very well, I'm very well. Awesome. We're, we're here in the uh, Fletcher Empire, um, yes. which is this beautiful gallery of photographs and also talent uh, down in Dunsborough in Western mm. Australia. Can you tell me how long you've had this sort of empire? Okay, well, the empire started <laughs> with my brother. Okay. Yep. Do you know him? Have you heard of Christian Fletcher? Yes. Yeah, he's kind of famous, I suppose, in landscape photography. Yep. Um, he's not being on, the, not coming on the Fiji workshop, I believe. No, um, he's not. But they've got the next we've best got, thing. We've, we've got the next best That's thing. That's right. Yep. Which is me. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we started in business together uh, probably about twelve years ago, thirteen right. years ago. Okay. Uh, Christian was selling photographs out of a uh, he's a camper van, I think he had in those days. Wow plays a guitar and he would do um, a market in Dunsborough. And we thought, um, he would say, oh, look, I've made all this money. Look, you know, look at this money I've made today. I said, oh, okay, that sounds like, sounds like it could be a bit of a market for a business down here. So my yeah. wife uh, came uh, to the conclusion that we should start up a gallery and we'd go in partnership with my brother. So um, that's how it started. Wow. Uh, she found a premises. We found this little tiny shop. Um, uh, which we rented. Yep. Uh, and Christian was up, up uh, north. I think he was on the Gibb River Road. Okay. And um, my wife gave him a, a phone call when he, he was obviously closer to a town and uh, said, look, you know, we want to start up a gallery of your photographs. Um, he said, yep. You know, Christian's always been the same. He doesn't care how he makes the money. Yep. Uh, he just wants, as long as it doesn't interfere with his lifestyle. Mm. He's happy, so absolutely. Cool. So we, uh, by the time we got back, we had a, a lease. Yes, um, I fitted the shop out, um, and uh, we wow. started our first gallery. Wow! And I suppose behind every great man is an even greater woman. Mm-hmm. So she's really the brains behind it. But it's probably true to say, behind every great photographer, there's even a greater videographer. <laughs> <That's>, yeah, <laughs> definitely so true. Yeah, that's. You, I mean, you've you've dabbled in stills yep. in the in the past, mm-hmm. but video is your where you excel. Yeah. If you haven't seen Michael's videos, he's, he's travels around the world and shoots on some in- incredible cameras that I'm sure you'll get to see when you come to the Fiji workshop. But just tell us a little bit about how you got started in videography and, and what it means to you to be a yeah. videographer. Okay. Um, well, I basically got told to, to get into videography. <laughs> right. Christian said to me, <laughs> you know, what are you doing? And I said, well, you know, um, I was going with Christian out on, on the shoot yeah. Um, because he was having all the fun, I was just sitting back and I was running the business with my wife and, yeah. and his wife, um, and I wasn't being creative. I wasn't um, getting any of that enjoyment that he was. Yeah. Um, so I would go out with him um, just as an appeasement, so I could actually ha- enjoy some of the spoils of the business, which yeah. is taking landscape photographs, so travelling to nice destinations. Mm. And um, so I was using a little X-Pan, uh, uh, Hasselblad X-Pan X. The Fuji X-Pan, 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 I can't even remember. Yep, yep. It's cameras, still cameras just don't interest me at all these days. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was taking still photos, and my photographs were going into like a stock. Okay. Um, and they were never going to appear in this gallery that we're in, because uh, Christian would remind me constantly, um, just walk out the front and have a look at the, the, the front of the building and see whose name is on the front of the building. <laughs> and then we'll, just, we'll, then we'll talk about whose photos are going to be in the, inside the thing. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, got, um, I got the nickname of Bin Boy. Bin Boy? Yeah, right. because I, my, I, I palmed off all the financial work to my wife. Yes. Uh, so all the business was run by her. Mm-hmm. Um, Christian was taking all the photographs and I was coming to work and I had nothing to do other than empty the bins and... <laughs> Um, touch up the walls because I used to paint houses for a living. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think Christian thought I was a bit of a threat to to him yes. with some of the photographs I was shooting. So he said, "Why don't you go shoot video? You know, because we can make a, a DVD on the business. We can promote the business yep. with this DVD." Okay. Um, I said, "Ah, oh, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. It's better than clean, you know, emptying bins and and uh, touching up walls in the gallery." So I. Uh, done some research and bought my first camera, okay. first video camera, which was a Canon X-H1, which was a 720p awesome oh, yeah. HD, <laughs> not full HD, so, uh, yeah. man. And um, I started um, shooting, shooting with that, and uh, the, the sole purpose was, okay, we're going to promote our business with this video technology. Get, get in there, learn how to do it, and it took about 
I don't know if we actually have even got a video yet. I don't think we've produced a, a promotional DVD for the business yet. <laughs> we've got one from, uh, on, on the TV at the moment. We have, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I, I tell a lie. Um, yeah. it, um, uh, I have actually produced a, a, a second TV commercial okay. in 13 years or something. Or wow. Whatever. Okay. It was just, <laughs> which is not too bad, I thought. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. a pretty good, pretty good result. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'd be, that, was, that was the main motivation. Go out and shoot video. And, um, and that was, that was the minim, mitigating the threat to him. Okay. Um, yeah. Because being twins, we're always competitive and have been all our life. And that's why it's, sometimes it's best to, to have our own separate path so we can... I know flourish in our own egos and not yeah. sort of uh, be in competition with each other. So yeah. that's how the video started. I know that too well. I'm a twin as well Are myself. Really? Yes. So, okay. Uh, I didn't know that. That's, that's how Identical? I get so much work done. Identical. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, What's he do? Is, is, well. is, he, is he a... Yeah. So he's, he's, not a a, he's not into the arts at is all. He? So he hangs ah. off buildings for a living. So Ah, uh, well, there you go. So you, yeah. I wasn't into the arts either. I was a painter. I painted houses for a living. There you go. Before that, I used to serve people... Uh, nachos in our wow. restaurant we had. Wow. And before that, I used to work in the car industry as a financial controller. So wow. I, I just said, well, you know, I saw what Christian was doing and how, how much fun he was having. I thought, yeah, maybe I can become creative, you know, and uh, Absolutely. get out there and uh, become an artist. Yeah, cool. You know, so. And you've obviously, throughout that time, there's been huge changes. Mm. And you said before that you've, you started with a video camera. Yep. Mm. Now... Through the time, we've had the change, obviously, to digital SLR yep. and the way the video cameras operate. Can you tell us a little bit about how that really impacted your business of HDI? Um, is, that's right, HDI, is it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's registered. I never got around to that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Facebook name. That's all, that's all we need. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's fine. Um, uh, yeah, how, the, the, the 5D Mark II was massive for everybody in at our level, the yeah. grassroots level, the... Um, independent filmmaker, the student filmmaker, yep. um, the newbie hack like I was. So when the 5D Mark II came out, all of a sudden you could you could get that shallow depth. So I was you know looking at photographs that Christian would take, or um, and just see the beautiful bouquet that that shallow depth. I thought, man, how good it would be to be able to get that in video, yeah. as opposed to having all this, you know great depth of field yeah so the 5d mark ii that um i think i had my X, xha1 for a year or two and then the 5d mark ii came out and i was like man christian bought one because he was using dslrs in those days yes yeah so he bought one and we had to share it oh and like twins who yeah, have been sharing okay. things all their life yeah. you know we used to be at the same clothes and we'd have to yeah. we'd have, we'd share toys and and uh, share bedrooms you know it was like man i've got to get my own dslr so yeah. in the end uh, i think the business i convinced the, the financial controllers of our business my wife and his wife that um yeah we needed two 5d mark twos and nice and so yeah i just from there it was just like um, a, breath of, a breath of fresh air. It's like, man, okay. you know, how cool is this camera? Yep. When it first came out, though, I mean, this didn't, it just wasn't producing what everyone was hoping for because it, as soon as you press record, it would sharpen everything up. Yep. It would open the, it would close the aperture down, you get this massive depth of field. So, what's happened there? As soon as you press record, you know, all this beautiful shallow depth would just disappear. Right, okay. Didn't you know that? It's, um, it, was a, it was before they uh, changed the firmware. So okay. when the f camera first came out, and the way we dealt with it was to disconnect the lens. So I spent the first, I'm not too sure, was it a year or six months or yeah. shooting with my 5D with a lens just hanging off the front of it. Wow, so it was actually like... It was disconnected, yeah. You disconnect it. Wow. And that would then lock it in, huh. and then you would press record. You know, and then people go, oh, Canon, I'm not going to, you know, if something goes wrong with the camera, you, yeah. you're you not going to get any warranty, da 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 um, But that's the only way you could get wow. all that beautiful shallow depth of field wow. until they changed the firmware because there was so much of an uproar about it. Yeah, absolutely. And then once they sorted it, you'd press the record and it was like it was uh, overriding all your manual settings. Right. As it went into like an auto mode. Yep. Stupid, but I, know, right. I don't know how Vincent Lafferade and he must have disconnected the lenses when he, when he produced Reverie. Yeah, yeah. So, now a lot of these photographers coming along to the Fiji workshop, they're actually going to be shooting on probably a Canon Mark II or a Canon? More, more likely a, Mark a III Nikon, or a not Nikon. a Nikon, a, a, Nikon. a lot of Nikons. There'll be a lot of Nikons out yeah, there. Yeah, um, you've obviously had that experience with digital SLR. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, and since that time, you've moved on to the beautiful C300, which mm. we'll touch base on in a mm. little bit. But I'm interested to hear how the photographers coming along, because there's going to be a lot of them, mm. and also the possible videographers coming along, will learn from you mm. and your experience. What mm. will you be able to teach them when they come along? Mm. The importance of video. Yeah. Um, for the videographers, hopefully they'll they'll get a bit of an insight to my headspace and, and how I go about my editing. Right. Uh, I'm not going to be able to, in the time that we have allocated per group, yeah. not going to be able to to go into the nuts and bolts of editing. Sure. Yeah. It's it's just not enough time. That's a that's a, a whole new workshop in, in itself. I have to come uh, on to your workshops. Though. Well, I haven't got any yet, but <laughs> you know, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, we can sort something out. Just Michael at christianfooted.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I'm hoping to do is to just give people a, a show them you know, how how quick and easily you can actually create good content. And yeah. It's and you don't need massive technology. The technology that they have already, if on this course, will be suitable to create good promotional uh, material for them, okay. um, web-based, yep. uh, or even you know TV, whatever they want to do. You know, all DSLRs now shoot full HD video, and some of them shoot 4K video, yeah. and which which is nice as well, but it adds a whole new spectrum to yeah. storage and um, processing. So, uh, yeah, um, I want to sort of sh show them how I go, f uh, how I approach a shoot. Um, uh, a lot of it is improvised. It's made up okay. there and then on the spot. I, I'll, I'll look at the scene and I'll just say, okay, right, I'm going to shoot all this stuff because it looks good. And when I get back into the editing suite, I'll just make something up make something it's like having all the ingredients and you just put it together right and then um but yeah i want to show people how i produce from start to finish yes and how i create emotion yep uh mood um and how i stylize mm. uh, my footage and how i uh, cut it yep so that it's it looks like it was done professionally it's not you know you know you, the fades are good yes yep. you don't you're not using overly using um, cross dissolves or yeah. fade in, fade out dissolves, you know, just, um, just nice clean cuts. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily always hitting the mark on the, the beat of, the, of music or uh, just so just trying to get a feel and, and similarly um, by using uh, mats to, to create a widescreen f effect and things like that. Just, um, yeah, when they go away, that, that I'm hoping that I'll give them enough confidence to say, yeah, I, I can do that. I can, yeah. I can create myself a nice little promotional video. There's so many online uh, galleries out there. Yeah. And people say, uh, you, know, you click on about and you have a look at the person and, and it's just a blur. But if they had oh gosh, yeah. a nice little professional video showing them shooting in the field, yep. locations they've shot and, mm -hmm. and them talking about the passion for photography, then um, you know, that's what I'm hoping that they'll get out of it. Absolutely, yeah. And mm. I mean, as photographers, we've, they've already got the tools, so it kind of makes mm. sense for them to hit mm. that little red button mm. or um, turn it onto the video mode to actually mm. experience, mm. Uh, well, basically grow on their, their skill set mm. um, because they can make money from it. They can do it for other businesses, wow. they can do it for their own business. So it really branches them out, especially for those wedding photographers and yeah. portrait photographers as well. because. Yeah. I know I did weddings and everyone was always asking me, oh, do I shoot video as well? So maybe they can use some of your knowledge uh, that you've experienced over the yeah. years yeah. To, uh, to learn video. Well, I can, I can uh, vouch, vouch for, for photographers that yep. there's a big market of photographers out there. Yes. A huge market of photographers. Yep. But when you come to video videography, it shrinks dramatically. Yeah. Um, I'm... There's not that many, I don't have that many friends in the photographic world. If I wanted to have this big um, get together of all my photo mates, yes. all my video mates, yep. um, you know, there's, there'd probably be three or four of us, you know, I yeah, don't know. Wow. You know, there's, there's plenty of guys out there doing it. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a community like the photographic community. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. a huge, massive presence. And uh, I think it's, the thing is, it's, it's just that much harder. It's mm. just, you're not just producing one photograph to get an impact. You have to produce a whole piece. Yeah. You might have to put in, you know, a hundred, wow. hundred images almost, you know, to, to come up with a five minute edit. Yes. You know, so you can't just go on a shoot, yeah. come home, put up one awesome photograph and put it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, get all that 
social sort of um, inspiration that that sort of you know pick up and then yes. yeah. um, you can't just do that. You got you got to go back and toil away for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days and yeah. Yeah. come up with an edit. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I wanted to show them that we we can produce an edit. Yeah. My intention would be to to start from basic files yes. and produce an, uh, a promotional edit Excellent. that um, they can take away and say, well, okay, yep, I can apply that same technique to myself. Perfect. Now, you just mentioned before the photographer side of things. Mm. Something I'm seeing a lot out in the industry at the moment is these photographers picking up drones. Ah, yes, and drones. A lot of them are not doing it for the still side, they're doing it for the video footage, mm -hmm. for the locations they're in. Yep. I mean, these, a lot of photographers travel to these dream locations and only come away with a still image, but I'm finding drones are really making an impact in videography and the mm. photographer's world. Have you had much experience with drones and uh, will you be bringing a drone along or anything like that to Fiji that you can talk about? I, I have. Okay. I haven't had any commercial experience. Okay. Right. But I have had plenty of experience flying drones. I've had a couple of drones. I've had the DJI Phantom 1 and yeah. currently have the Phantom 2. Excellent. Okay. Um, so yeah, awesome. Um, bit of kit. I mean, what you can achieve from a drone yes. um, will just lift that production. Okay. Lift the production to professional levels. You know, you've got the ability from such a, a, a relatively cheap platform yep. to get the angles that you're never going to get unless you hire a chopper and at you know, twelve hundred dollars an hour for the R44 up to two thousand dollars for a wow. squirrel or something. You know, it's that's hugely prohibitive. I, we just finished a shoot up in um, Arnhem Land, uh, not Arnhem Land, up in um, Kimberley. the Kimberley yes. with ND5. Yep. Um, and one hour in the chopper would have purchased a Phantom 2 with the gimbal wow. stabiliser and a GoPro Hero 4 all, wow. all together. You know, and you, um, to be perfectly honest, the footage that comes from it is far superior than banging around in the yeah. in a chopper. Wow. Unless you've got a Cineflex on the front or something yep. to stabilize your footage. I mean, software is pretty good at fixing things up, but yep. um, yeah, so it's, um, drones are, you know, you've got to have them. If you're a serious production company, yep. you've got to have drones, you know, you've got to have steady cams, like mm. the Mavi rigs and things like that. Yep. Um, but they're all, a lot of these things are just gimmicks as well. So that's not, these things are not going to make your productions better than anyone else's. Yeah, yep. you're not going to you start charging 10,000 Everyone's seen, everyone's yep. seen a, a, a rising shot of a lighthouse. Yeah. You know, you pan around with your drone around a lighthouse or a structure, Sugarloaf Rock, you're cruising. At, at sunset, no doubt. Yep. Yeah, at sunset. Well, not so much at sunset because it depends on what you're using. The low liability of some of these cameras they stick on is no good. But Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the technology's there and you need to have those. But if you're relying solely on drones and all this gimmickry time, that's photography, um, you, you're going to miss the market. I mean, sure, maybe commercial work, mm -hmm. where you've got to have that sort of, it's a set sort of shoot, but if you want to create emotion and, yep. you know, you can create emotion with a, a, you know, a 550D or something and lens whack, you yep. know, you can, I mean, people shoot all this beautiful footage and then they get all these filters on it to, 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 to dirty it up, to make it look atmospheric and yep. grimy yeah. and with after effects and yeah it's like well yeah. Yeah. you can still achieve that same result by just using a cheap camera and yeah. using a few techniques of not connecting the lens and letting light leak into the yeah, sensor right. and, and and some of those productions are so much better than yeah all these big glossy highly saturated highly droned highly time-lapsed yeah yeah um, productions highly steady cam productions yeah but you know having said that they all have their place yeah in videography cool now, as photographers, um, me being a photographer as well, I know about shutter speeds and apertures and ISOs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all that stuff and crop sensors. And, but on the, I'm interested to know, when I sort of attend your workshop session, what am I going to learn as a photographer? And what, will I learn the settings best used for video based on your experience? Is that something that you... Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go through step by step the best way to, I mean, everyone's gonna be using different cameras. And I, right. Someone says to me, how do I set up my Nikon? Yeah. I've been Canon all my life, effectively. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna know the menu systems of the Nikons. But the principles um, the same. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. okay, so the menus, are, they all have the same meanings, effectively. It's just finding them on your, on yep. your, your menu screens. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll um, talk about 
Um, obviously, you know, the best settings for your camera, you know, obviously you want to shoot the highest resolution settings, whatnot. Right. Um, talk about setting um, your custom profile so you're not shooting highly uh, contrasty, highly saturated imagery. Right. Um, we want to sort of make sure that you don't, you, the capture you've got is flat, desaturated, um, so you can get as much data. Because we're dealing with low res JPEGs unless you're shooting reds or. Right. Uh, F55s or things like that. You know, if you're just using DSLR, you're just shooting low-res JPEGs. Right. Okay. So you've got to make sure that you get everything right because you can't just manipulate like you can a, a TIFF in a RAW file right. in, a, in a DSLR. So you've got to make sure it's a lot more to get right in camera mm -hmm. because the post-production side of it is is not is not there like for a, a still photograph. Right. Okay. So Michael, you talked about resolution before on mm -hmm. that sensor and getting the incredible resolution from the camera. I couldn't help but notice your Beautiful scarf. Oh, do you like this? I can see the resolution from it. Do you, can, what is it? Like, well, this is our latest. I'm glad you 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 um you noticed, mate, because this is our latest acquisition in our gallery. Um, right. Idea of Christian's wife Jen. Okay. And it's a it's a scarf, beautiful silk scarf. Okay. Is it silk? What it, is it? It is. It is silk. What is it? Smooth polyester. Silk. Smooth as silk, not I'll polyester. Just call it silk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's got one of Christian's crappy images on it. <laughs> And I tell you what, they've never looked better. Oh, really? It's amazing. <laughs> and we we don't sell lots of them because we don't want people to to get on the bandwagon and get their own. But they are a beautiful looking scarf. They, yeah. I mean, I wear scarves all the time, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just down the beach wearing them. Oh, well, yeah, forty degrees. You want to get a better scarf? You got it cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd just put it on uh, to impress you. Is oh, it wow. is it doing that? It's doing that, mate. I really <laughs> want to take one back to Melbourne. So Do you? Can they order them online? Um, they can order them online, mate. Yeah, everything, you can get anything from yep. the Christian Fletcher Galleries online. I was watching Tony's video and you asked that question and I was going, yeah. <laughs> what is the best shooting experience I've ever had? And I, I don't know if I have a, a best one. They are all... A top one then. A top one. Um, well, I mean, places like you go to Iceland, you go to Norway, which I did previously, um, up in Papua New Guinea, yep. um, they're all great. There's never been a standout one because it, there's always been something which hasn't quite aligned. Right. Um, possibly, um, I wouldn't say um, in the, like a, a experience, sole experience, but like my best shooting experience is when we go away with, as a collaboration with Andy Five Friends, yep. with Pete and Les, Tony and Christian, you know, and, and my um, mate Darren, who I film film with these days. Yeah. So yes, I don't have any particular favourite, um, but I think it's it's more about sharing the experience. So yeah. if I'm a sharing the experience and we're all frothing over it, that's my favourite. Um, well, it wasn't actually my gear as Christian. So when <laughs> I was when I was just bin boy um, yeah. in our business, uh, we were shooting. Christian and I were shooting in the Stirling Ranges. And uh, I had, what did I have? Sterling Ranges are the mountains. Yeah, Sterling, Sterling Ranges down, in, down southwest. Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. they're a thousand, Over a thousand meters. Thousand meters. Yeah. yeah, and they get snow on it in winter. You know, yeah. once every ten years. Yeah. But I was shooting with Christian, and then we had, uh, I think it was a seventy to two hundred um, Canon lens on a one DS or something. I can't even remember what it was. I'm not even sure what why I was using that, and Christian was what he was shooting. But um, I didn't. Tighten up the leg of the tripod enough. Um, when I was getting ready to put the gear in the car, and the, oh, the leg sort of dropped down, and over she went and dropped the, the lens and the camera onto the. I was only, only onto gravel, but it was enough to do about two and a half grand's worth of damage. Ouch. And Ouch. Christian was like, <laughs> 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 so, so you know, it goes it's like, like video, it's still photography gear, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I wasn't shooting video then. It yeah, yeah. didn't matter. Thanks for having me. Michael, I really, really appreciate it. And 
I'm really looking forward to attending your workshop session on the, on the island mm -hmm. and hearing all about this video thing that is new to a lot of photographers mm. out there. Yep. So I really look forward to seeing you there. So yeah. cheers, mate. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Thanks for having us. No looking worries. forward to it. Okay.